Would you look at the size of this round table? My goodness, this is impressive, folks. Look at this. This is a staff for the ages. Welcome in to Warchant.com, Warchant TV. Round table time as we discuss Florida State football. We're close now, boys and girls, very close to the start of the season. Obviously, two weeks of camp are in the books. Just finished a scrimmage. Thoughts on what this team looks like, where they're headed, and what we hope them to be. Corey, I'm going to start with you, first of all. And, uh, and I ask you right off the bat, after two weeks of camp, what are you more confident in, let's say, about with this team than you were before? You know, there's a few, but I'm going to stick to one. I'm going to say the receivers, only because my lack of confidence in them to start uh, the, the fall camp was, was way up there. It was I, – I thought the first couple of days they were astoundingly not good. Um, and then they've slowly become a, an actual – I mean, they've got some players now. You start, you know, Keyshawn, Keyshawn Helton looks like Keyshawn Helton. Uh, Pokey Wilson's a nice player. And then you got, you know, Parchment still working in, but you can see something there, some flashes. But then Darian Williamson, Kentron Portier, those are guys that, man, I, I thought in the late in the spring and then in the early part of the fall, I'm like, I don't know if these guys, I, I don't know if they can play it at this level. And then you watch them more and more, they become more and more confident. And now I think it goes from, the wor- like I thought it was the worst position group on the team to start off uh, fall camp. To now I'm like, you kind of get excited about the possibilities because there's so many different dudes that can do so many different things um, that now I think they could actually be, uh, you know, decent, which is better than we thought they would be, I think, uh, two weeks ago. I didn't, I didn't like the fact that, you, Jeff, you jumped past me. Like I'm right next to you, but you look past me to throw <laughs> the ball to Corey. Which yeah. Is kind of- Kind of annoying, but but uh, no, I, I agree with them 100. percent And I I think the receiver, um, I don't know that I'm excited about the group, but I do, but I do feel way better about them than I did uh, certainly last season or in the spring uh, or the first few days of the camp. I mean, they look like they've got some guys that can actually, you know, do the the basic requirements of their job. I don't know if there's a lot of superstars out there, uh, but they've definitely come a long way. I think the race is towards some sort of consistency. You always hear this from Coach Norvell. You heard it after the. Uh, scrimmage last night. It, it's he's got guys that he's excited about, but he's always quick to throw the caveat that they need to develop more consistency. There's a lot of drops out there. The ball hits the ground far too often, but there is talent there. So I understand what you're saying, Corey, and I do think we're getting to a place where we can get excited about that group. It's just a matter of how soon. Is it is it game two, game three, game four? We hope game one, obviously against Notre Dame, we find that consistency. And in the interest of staying on brand, Aslan, I'll ask you. What are you less confident about? First, first of all, I just want to point out the fact that Tom and I are at the bottom of the screen propping and holding <laughs> you guys up on our shoulders. Mm, yeah. Apropos. You know, this probably isn't reasonable. You guys will probably put me in line. But quarterbacks, right? I, I Maybe I, for all my skepticism, I still had some opti- optimism that one of these guys is going to emerge halfway through camp. We are 13 days away from this game. Antonio Cromartie days away. Snoop minutes days away. And we don't know the situation at quarterback. Uh, Mackenzie Milton seemed like maybe he was going to be hurt, but then we saw him come back and have maybe one of the better 11-on-11 drives we've seen at practice. And then we don't see him out there. And then we do see Jordan Travis. And then we we also get that in our rear view that, hey, Jordan Travis, he could be really special. But then we're reminded that his fragility, his durability is still in question. So I would have liked to have known, to have seen through 12 practices or so, one of these guys emerge and we haven't seen that yet. So that's a little bit of a, a surprise slash disappointment for me. I don't know how reasonable it is, but that's for me. Yeah, well, I'd say, I, I, real quick, I'd say that's the thing that I don't know is going to be settled even into the season because you're talking about dur- durability concerns, Aslan. I mean, it, it reminds me kind of of COVID last year where you wake up on Saturday morning and you're saying, who's playing? Like, who, what members of the team are going to be available today? Because nothing is safe. I remember Jeff and I, when we were doing the pregame show, it was just you're, you're watching Twitter for reports every single segment, like who is going to be the guy that's available today. Now, of course, we do get access to practice during the week, so we get a pretty good idea. But when you're trying to project out to week three against Wake Forest, who's going to be the starting quarterback? I have no idea. Whoever's the most durable at that particular time. It stretched out to North Carolina on the road into the month of November when they're playing really tough games back to back to back to back. Can you count on one of these two guys to be the starter each and every week? So I understand the concerns there for sure. And I don't know that there'll be a good answer at any point in the season. You probably just need to be a little bit flexible in terms of your expectations as either a media member or a fan in that regard. The the other, the other, the other position I was going to bring up was linebacker. 
Uh, I just felt like coming off of last season, the fact that they got so much playing time, Steven Dix and Amari Gaynor, I just felt like, you know, another year in the system, a real off season, I felt like you'd see some, just some continuity at the linebacker position. You'd have a clear cut an- answer as to who the starters are going to be, who the main guys are. And really, I mean, it's, they're constantly mixing and matching. Uh, I think it's a group of four or five different guys that, that couldn't, I would, I wouldn't be shocked if you told me Kalen Deloach is a starter, Amari Gaynor is a starter, Stephen Dix is a starter, a DJ Lundy's a starter, the transfer from Maryland's a starter. I mean, they're, they're, they're playing all those guys so much. That competition seems like it's going to go on. And, and to the point you guys are making about the quarterbacks, if you don't have a clear cut winner, does that mean you don't have anybody really excelling? So that position I hoped would get a lot better this year, second year in the system. And I'm not sure that that's going to be the case. Don't you think, would, though, guys, I was going to say, with the quarterbacks, though, it's going to be better. It's right. going to be better than it was last year. We It might not be as good as Aslan was hoping in the middle of August or you know late August, but it can't be worse. It will be substantially better than it was a season ago because he, Chubba, Chubba's going to be better. Tate should be better. I mean, they're, they've gotten a lot of reps and they're all in the system. But, yeah, you have two experienced guys still vying for this job. So it, it will be better than what they were handed with last year against Georgia Tech. Agree. Well, there's experience. There's a lot of reps that have been taken as as a starter, uh, both obviously for McKenzie Milton, not here, but in general. And then obviously it had to had to teach Jordan a lot last year. Uh, it wasn't always ideal, the situation. He's running for his life most games. But obviously he got a lot of playing time. So this, this offseason, having a normal camp, a, a normal spring and a normal offseason with install that's happened here, yes, I think the quarterback room will be better. I don't know that it's going to be good. It just will be a lot better than it was, and that's a step forward, and that's a reason to be positive. Ira, I have to circle back with you here. That's actually a perfect segue because we're going to get into the quarterbacks, and how do you see that playing out? I guess that question more directly would be, who do you think is the starter against Notre Dame? Yeah, and I I wrote a long column uh, about the quarterbacks that is up on the site at warchant.com. People want to check it out. It went up this morning, and just kind of my thoughts on – what Mike Norvell is doing and not uh, not naming a starter and the fact that I don't think he's going to name a starter. And I know uh, Corey Naslon shared similar thoughts on Wake Up Board Chant. I'm sure you guys are probably say the same thing on your guys' show, Jeff Cameron's show. But I don't think he's going to announce a quarterback. It, it, he may not announce, announce it until game time. He may not announce anything. He may announce it maybe the Thursday or Friday before the game, but it wouldn't surprise me if he waited to the last minute. Uh, I just think it, it makes sense. It's a smart thing to do given the fact that you don't have a lot of advantages in this game against Notre Dame, but one little edge you might have is the fact that they've got to prepare for Jordan Travis and Mackenzie Milton and their varied skill sets. So I think that's a smart thing to do. I think Jordan Travis is probably going to win the job. I mean, we've been waiting. Uh, we in the spring, you kind of were waiting for for the for Mackenzie Milton to become 2017, 2018 Mackenzie Milton, and then we saw a glimpse of it in the spring game, and we thought, okay, well, if it came that far that quickly in the spring. What's it going to be after the summer and preseason? And I just feel like when we've seen him, he's had a couple of good days. He's had some good moments, but we haven't seen him consistently be that guy. Um, and, and we're still waiting for it. It could come. Maybe it comes. But for, but at some point, you just say, well, what do we have right now? And I think to me, Jordan Travis and, and, and Corey mentioned the quarterback room being better because of the improvement from Chubba Purdy and Tate Rodemaker. I think Jordan Travis is a whole lot better. And – You know, if he's the guy, I think he can be a good, solid college quarterback, maybe a good, very good college quarterback over time. But but right now, I would say he's going to be the guy. Um, But I think Mackenzie Milton will play and, uh, you know, they'll try to use both of them at some time. But I think Jordan Travis, to me, has proven he's the guy right now. It's an interesting room because as we vet this and we talk a lot about quarterback and it's the most important position on the field, I don't know. This just all felt a little disconcerting to me just now. Like the way we went through the quarterbacks didn't exactly garner confidence, I don't think, or engender confidence. Uh, Just because, again, you do have an injury history with both these guys that is fairly significant. And I don't care how much better Chubba Purdy is than he was a year ago, which obviously was injured, or how far along we think Tate Rodemaker is. That ain't good, man. If if we're, if either one of those two guys have to miss time, significant time, it really does put you in a state of uh, sort of hand wringing and disarray. Uh, I'd wish that they could find some consistency. Maybe these two weeks as they prep for the Notre Dame game will illuminate something here because I do think those guys missing time or having uh, deloading or whatever you want to call it, 
I don't think it's ideal. It may be necessary, and it could absolutely be what they're doing, but it, it's not ideal. Ordinarily, you'd like to get your first guy all the reps he can get before that game and not have to worry about days where they can't be out there. Uh, has camp changed your thoughts, Tom, on what's possible this season in in that way? Is there anything that you are excited about? Is there something that uh, you think, you know what? Uh, I feel a lot better. This is going to be a better team because of this. Yeah, let me bring the optimism for just a moment. That got really dreary for the last couple of minutes. But I, I would say that I think this team is going to be more predictable. <clears throat> I don't know if that means seven wins or eight wins. Probably not. But when you're talking about the last few seasons, there was a lot of volatility, a lot of inconsistency in the play. And one thing I've seen from going out to the first spring practice until uh, the, fall, the uh, Friday practice with full pads, you see improvement from one point to the next. And you see that there's reliability of guys are where they're supposed to be. For example, think about gap integrity on defense, guys setting the edge, uh, guys staying at home and not rovering around and trying to make a play. I'm seeing more and more of details like that on both sides of the ball. And that's what gives me some hope this year is it seems like the guys understand the scheme. They're buying into the scheme. They're not trying to freelance and and do something on their own and, and do more than their own job. So I think one thing that I'm looking forward to this season more than anything else is that I, week to week, we could kind of expect what a segment group, each segment group is going to bring to the table. If the linebackers aren't good enough, we're going to know that, but they can do certain things well, and it's not going to be week to week just a disaster. So that's one thing. It's a baby step. I understand that. Maybe it's not the most optimistic thing in the world, uh, but this has been a program the last few years that has been marked by woeful inconsistency. I think you're going to see more consistency as time goes on, which means that they're buying in. For the long-term health of the program, I think that's really good. I like the fact that I, I like the fact that um, the, the, some of these freshmen are real players. Like Knowles, Shaheen Brown seemingly makes an interception every day. I don't know how much Shaheen Brown is going to play initially this season, but he's going to be a big-time player for this program. It looks like it, it seems like that's a really big hit. But I think one of the thing that other than man, the defensive line was so bad last year, so bad. We thought it was the strength and it was so bad. I think you look at this defensive line and you get you're encouraged. I mean, I, the way they talk about Dennis Briggs and in, in 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 reality, the way he's looked at practice, he's a different dude. He might be a difference maker, a game changer type player. He's been really good at practice. You throw him inside with Fabian Lovett, Robert Cooper. I think we all know is is a serviceable college player. Fabian Lovett, I think, could take a big step. And I think that Dennis Briggs is going to take a big step and you're going to have better dudes out wide. And that, that to me, you're going to be stronger on the defensive line. The linebackers are still in. Eh. I think the secondary has a chance to be decent, pretty good actually. And I think the defensive line will be much improved, which should help. Corey, you hit on one of my surprises of camp and that I'm really excited about. Mm. And it's because they're excited about him, but also he brings the body type of versatility. Shaheen Brown, this is a kid, Shaheen Brown could be, a guy that you move around quite a bit because he comes in at 205 pounds. Now, that'd be light for a linebacker, but he's not afraid to hit you. He's got great instincts. He can cover. They're maybe going to have to move him around quite a bit and not just have him be, um, you know, a, a safety. He, he can move around and play a lot of different positions, I think. He's a big kid. He's a thick kid, yeah. and he seems to have great instincts. Kevin Knowles gets mentioned every time the coaches talk about this defense, which I think gets me to the larger picture. Tom, you just alluded to it. When we talk about consistency, can we start there with the defense? I know the offense is where everybody – it's sexy to talk about quarterback play and skill position players, whether it be really talented running backs or up-and-coming receivers – but in truth, this defense over the last few years has been an embarrassment to football. And it's been very difficult to watch because it doesn't give you a chance to win games. You really, I used to say this all the time during the last decade, that unfortunately, if you can't get stops, you can lose to anybody. And so, you know, going into each of these games, even if you felt good about the offense with a particular matchup, you thought, well, they're going to have to score 40. And I don't think that's going to be the case this year. They may not be a great defense, but I think all of our excitement really does center around the defense, except for those linebackers. And even there, Deloach has taken a big step forward. I know they love Lundy. He's a big, huge guy. I like him against the run. I don't know about him in coverage. But we know they've got a lot of bodies and a lot of athletes in that secondary as well. they got a legitimate defensive end to get after the passer, and Jermaine Johnson, Keir Thomas, I, I really believe they're going to be much better on defense. And that gives them a chance to win football games. Again, that's a reason for optimism for me. One, one, other, one other young guy I want to mention was Patrick Payton. 
And, yeah. and, and to me, that's a big surprise in a huge position of need. Like Shaheen Brown has been a huge surprise and, and is a really talented young player, but he's, you know, at safety, that's not a huge position of need. They don't have guys that can get after the quarterback except Jermaine Johnson, maybe Keir Thomas, uh, you know, maybe McClendon a little bit. But, but you bring in a guy like Patrick Payton, who's put on weight since he got here and consistently gets after the quarterback. Norvell singled him out after the scrimmage. One of the first names he mentioned after the scrimmage Sunday night. That's a big deal, man. If they got even even if it's just situationally a, a guy that can get after the quarterback, they just haven't had that in a while. I'm curious. Uh, one th- one thing to note here: Adam Fuller said after the scrimmage, you know, he talked about a lot of guys. He talked about there'll be sets where they have three linebackers, two linebackers, one linebacker, and that got me to thinking about they are still obviously searching for the right optimization, if you will, of Amari Gaynor. They're they're really trying to figure out what to do with him. The problem with Amari Gaynor is he looks like a million bucks, but he's a tweener. He's a tweener, and they've got to figure out a way to utilize that athleticism and that explosiveness, and they know that, but they're trying to figure out where that best fits. He's got to be on the field, but how and when? And that's interesting. They are clearly still – I thought those answers from Coach Fuller last night – seem to indicate they're still searching for some roles there at the linebacker position for him. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Malik Osborne on the basketball team where, you know, Leonard Hamilton said at the beginning of last season, we've got to find a home for him. And, and it was kind of up and down carving out a role. Uh, when you're that talented, they've, they've got to find a way to get you on the field, at least in certain situations like Ira was talking about with Patrick Payton. But I think it's, it's interesting to note when we were there at the luncheon a couple weeks ago and all the talk at linebackers, I, I had a long conversation with Chris Marv inv- and, and Adam Fuller as well involved Amari Gaynor and Steven Dix Jr. Somewhere along the way, their names were mentioned less, and it's Kalen Deloach, and it's DJ Lundy. And I have to say, just from my own personal observations, watching some of these practices, is that Kalen Deloach is somebody who's around the pile often. He's somebody who sticks to his his rules, his principles, whatever they're asking him to do, and then he goes and makes a play afterwards. You're looking for reliability. There are a lot of guys that might have uh, the ability to get off the bus and wow you, but are they players that you can rely on? I think that goes for both the offense uh, and the defense. And and one thing on offense I want to look for this year, too, I, I think there are some nice pieces at running back. DJ Williams got a lot of praise last night after the second scrimmage. Uh, but, of course, Jason Corbin is now fully healthy. Lawrence Toafili, who was mentioned a lot more last year as an explosive player, he's mentioned a little bit less. I mean, guys, how would you sort out that particular position group? And is there somebody that you would latch on to as, as one of the more reliable pieces and somebody who's going to get more touches than the other? Aslan, you talk. I'm good, man. I don't – yeah, Corbin, I guess. You know, I mean, Tofili has been talked about, but he's on the Polynesian Player of the Year watch list, so I still feel really good about right. Lawrence's chances for 2021. Yeah, maybe we should talk a little bit more about running backs, but, man, we're at the 18-minute mark, so I don't have a whole lot more to add. Aslan, you're killing us. No, that's it. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> DJ Williams was talked about because he was asked about him specifically. He's lost 15 pounds. He's showing some more bursts. That's encouraging. Uh, I don't know, man. To Jeff's point, talking about offensive football is more sexy skill positions. It's quarterback to me. The whole offense is going to come down to whether or not Jordan Travis can be available or Mackenzie Milton can be healthy. Those running backs smear all plug and play. I don't think there's going to be a significant drop off between those guys. What their roles will be. We'll find that as time goes on. That's the one thing I felt good about with Corbin last year was the fact that on third and one, fourth and one, he was able to pick up those tough yards. Will he be able to be a guy that's going to be able to get more explosive plays? I don't know, but I don't think he has to really add that because I think Toofili can still bring that. So uh, running back to me, I think they're they're well covered there. I'm not losing sleep over that one. It It would be. I was just going to say real quick, it is interesting. If you look back at uh, Norvell's Memphis teams, they generally had like a feature back. They had a guy that would have – 1200 1500 1800 yards and then several other guys that would get some carries but not necessarily split up i do think it's gonna be pretty split up i think corbin is is definitely earned the the ability to be a starter i think tofili is going to get a lot of reps even though they don't talk about him a lot when we see him we can see with our eyes he, he's a special guy and then Corey ran the oh, other right. day yeah. i was really surprised he had a run the other day where he put his foot in the ground, juked a defender. And I mean, we haven't seen that from him. And man, when he gets going full speed, it's a different kind of guy. So they've got some weapons in that backfield. I, I think, you know, to, to Aslan's point, I, I do think it's going to be running back by committee. Um, but, but I feel better about that. I, mean, I think we all feel better about that room than we did probably a year ago. Well, and I think as we wrap up, it, it would be silly of us to overlook what undergirds all of this. And that's whether or not the offensive line's any good. We haven't mentioned the offensive line here today. 
Uh, I was excited to hear Mike Norvell say that Robert Scott has had a great camp, not a good camp, a great camp, and that he's been comfortable on that left side. and He's held his own at times against Kier and Jermaine. I, that, that's exciting. Uh, let's hope that group, do we feel like they've got, I mean, they're still mixing and matching a little bit, but the competition has been there. We know Coach Atkins is going to do a good job of teaching both technique, but also the mental toughness. Uh, do we feel like they have seven guys, seven guys that we feel like they can rotate total and that they'll feel pretty good about? Six. They'll say six. No, I, think they, they, I mean, good. It depends on how you qualify good. But I think, you know, last year they had seven or eight guys that they felt like they could use. I think they'll at least have that many. I, 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 to, I was trying. I was trying so hard yeah. to do this positivity thing. And you're like, well, I don't know about good, Jeff. I mean, they've got well, some people they're going to play. Well, I'm I saying, like the guys. They haven't been out there. We just haven't seen healthy yeah, yeah. guys out. I mean, they've got – I think Babyon Johnson could be good for them. Now, Babyon right. – um, I mean, I don't want to give away some of the the older guys. Some of the older guys have not taken as many reps as the younger guys. So, um, so we'll have to see when it all comes together. Corey, say something. I need to hear your voice. Uh, I love you guys, man. This is fun. I like doing rounds. I, I, I hope next time we do this, Aslan can position us where we're actually in a round. We're round. It's a circle, so it's more like a round table. This is like a square. Yeah, well, that too. All that. This isn't really a circle that we're in right here. So I don't know. You call this a round table. No, well, this not, here, hockey lineup. No, uh, uh, Horton right wing, Iris yeah. center on the first uh-huh. line, Jeff's left wing. That's a good scoring position. Good for you, Jeff. And then Aslan yeah. and I are holding it up defensively. We're on the blue. But line. don't you guys yeah. think for real that the, the offensive line will be better? Right? It's not. We still don't know if it's going to be good. But it, everybody's back. Plus, you've added uh, a kid from Notre Dame who might play for you. You'll have more depth. You have more proven depth and experience. And the young guys are older. Like Maurice Smith. They talked about Maurice Smith having a really good camp. Robert Scott's been apparently very good at left tackle. You like uh, DLT. So you feel like you're better than you were last year. You just, you might not be great there, but you could be serviceable to decent. Are you noticing a trend if you're out there yeah. on warchant.com and warchant TV? Uh, I think a good way for us to summarize here this is going to be a better football team. They will be better than they were a year ago. We often have to throw in the caveat they may not be good. But they are going to be better than they were a year that's ago. That's the motto. That's the that's the sign they hit when they leave the locker room. Hey, and I've got to get my last word in here. As I knows, I got always got to get my last word in here. Jeff says that I was a downer, but he just said about five minutes ago that the defense has been an embarrassment to the sport of football. Yeah, not well, he's not wrong. Not yeah, he's just, not wrong. Not just yeah. Florida State football, an embarrassment yes. to the inter, the enterprise of football. Yeah. So wherever it, football's played. It's an embarrassment to humanity is what it's been for the last couple of years. And they need to be, they need to bring it up a little bit. Hey, for Ira Chappelle, Corey Clark, Tom Lang, Aslan Hazavandi, I'm Jeff Cameron. Thanks so much for watching on War Chant TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe, you bums. Do it. We love you. Till next time.